Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing SWAT team in the 15 minute pool on ICC. I'm going to open with D4 against SWAT team. I've just been on a D4 kick lately. I haven't really felt a great urge to open with other moves, although I have. <laughs> but uh, time to get back to some fundamental chess. I had a tough loss yesterday. Let's try to get back on, on track against SWAT team. I'll just check his stats before we get going. Um, he has a peak 15 minute rating of 2165. Uh, oh, okay. This is Rene Phillips, according to his notes. I know who that is. That's a chess coach and um, player from Louisiana, I believe. Um, C6. Okay, so compared to if I had played knight f3 previously, like here, I can't play queen c2 in hopes of defending the pawn. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to play knight f3 and gambit that pawn. If he takes c4, I have the option of going into the note boom. He actually, he's playing a stonewall variation. Okay. Let's play bishop f4 and just develop kind of conventionally against that. I don't have any great knowledge or specific weapon in mind against this, but I do know that uh, there are some ideas for white involving queen c2 and h3 and trying to prepare g4. So let's try to follow some of those ideas. So usually black will castle, and I think I'll play h3 next move. That's what I'll do. a6. So you're trying to play an early b5? Is that the idea? Somehow seems a little slow to me. Yeah, b5 is not worth preventing. I'll just deal with it when it happens. So let's continue with h3. So I want to go g4 in order to destabilize this knight. When black plays this setup, this sort of aggressive stonewall with the knight coming in, I think it's really important to try to derail that knight as soon as you possibly can. Okay, so now b5. Now, do I go for space with c5? Or do I take on d5 and then play g4? That's also a pretty serious option. b3 doesn't make sense because he has bishop b4 pinning me. Or queen a5 maybe. Although, hmm. Now that I say that, <laughs> I could take on e4 against that. Huh, I don't know. This is an interesting decision. So if I take with the c pawn, he takes with his c pawn, g4, they can play b4 and drive my knight away. Let's say knight a4 in that case. It's a messy position is what it is. Maybe I should play c5 and go for the space. c5, knight f6. Hmm. I can still play g4 in that case. You know what? I will. I'm going to grab the space. I don't want to capture and maybe allow them to open the c file. I think I'd rather play it this way. This could still lead to a pretty exciting game, even though I'm somewhat closing down the position right now. Not sure what this guy's USCF rating is. I would guess he's probably 1900 to 2100, that sort of range. So what could he play here? Knight d7 or castles are the most likely moves. If castles, maybe knight e5 to preempt knight d7, like kind of eye that c6 pawn. If knight d7 first, probably g4, all the same. Queen a5, okay, queen a5 maybe is a little trappy. He's trying to go um, pawn to b4. I could just castle. That's safe. a3 doesn't stop b4 because of the pin down the a file. Could also just take on e4, but somehow castling seems best. If castles, though, I kind of have to give up on the idea of g4 for the time being. I'm okay with doing that. I think based on the moves he's played, um, I can go in, in for a more strategic game rather than playing for an attack with g4. Maybe that's the whole point of his move order. I don't know. Um, to dissuade white from going g4. I guess we'll find out. I think 95 makes perfect sense now. Yeah, let's go 95. His queen is very awkward on a5. It will undoubtedly have to move sometime soon. Um, Knight e5 is nice because it prevents knight d7. I would just take his pawn on c6. 
Bishop b7 defends the pawn, but it kind of dooms the bishop to a pretty bad diagonal. Next, I can play f3 if I want and kick out his knight. That's a common stonewall theme, which is the pawn structure we have here. You can see my 15-minute rating has taken a hit lately because I've had a couple losses to somewhat low-rated players. Yesterday's game was a heartbreaker. <laughs> I tell you, if you didn't see that game, go go and take a look at it against Complex Zeta. felt I played a good game throughout, and then I just um, got in time pressure and uh, wasn't able to find a tactical resource. So it happens. So Bishop F6, if I play F3, he's going to G5, is what he's saying to me. Hmm. I wonder if I can just take on e4 with my knight. Like, knight takes, f takes, just bishop e2. It's still so hard for black to complete their development. I'd also like to go f3, knight g5, and then break in the center with e4, but for some reason, I feel that's going to get messy if I do that. Will it really, though? Is that just good for me? Hmm. If I play knight takes, f takes, I don't think he would take with the d-pawn. That doesn't seem quite right. So knight takes, f takes, bishop e2. I can still go for f3, and they still have trouble completing their development. I'm going to do that. That's simpler. And I like the look of that resulting position. It's just an easier way to play it. I mean, they could take with the d-pawn, but then they weaken the c4 square. So, yeah, I, I would expect them to play it like they're doing it now. These black pieces are misplaced. They somehow need to complete development, and meanwhile, I'm trying to play f3 immediately on the next move. Maybe after f3 take, I'll even have the option of rook takes. Like rook takes and then put the bishop back on d3 and maybe double up on the f-file. Because that knight on e4 was black's lone, lone good piece, and now it's it's gone, and we can focus on the central break. Yeah, they return the queen. Makes sense. So again, on, on a5, it wasn't going anywhere. So now if f3 is bishop g5 a problem, either before or after captures? I don't think so, no. I think if I go f3 and they take... Hmm, maybe then I play bishop d3. Oh, let's just play this and think which way to recapture thereafter. Or even e takes f3, bishop d3, attacking this pawn. I mean, I think taking with the rook is the most natural. I'm just wondering about bishop takes e5 then. Like bishop takes e5, bishop takes e5, and they can somewhat like simplify the position. Bishop d3 would be very interesting. Bishop d3. <laughs> um, I wonder if after that they would just play a move like h well h6 even is bad, isn't it? Because I can check on g6 and then knight g6. So bishop d3, what of g6? That must be good for me. Bishop d3, f takes g2, bishop takes h7, king h8, knight g6, king takes h7, knight takes f8, double check, king g8. A bit messy.
this move, I'm just kind of trusting that this is going to work out. I don't want to waste more time. Um, I'm fully coordinated. I'm attacking h7. It would be really gutsy for them to play f takes g2, and I don't even think it's that good. Like, I always have a bailout line. If f takes g2, bishop takes h7, king h8, I don't have to play knight g6 right away. I could just take the pawn back. Like, king takes g2, he takes on e5. I take with a bishop. Uh, queen g5 check, king h2. Black's totally underdeveloped. I'm threatening a back rank mate there. They don't have time to take my e3 pawn. So when you're calculating a, a complex continuation like that, it's nice to know that you have a backup line available if necessary. So that's what I'm kind of going. I'm operating on that principle because I really want my bishop on this diagonal, I feel. I don't know if I want it. I wanted bishop takes f3. We could put the bishop on g4 then maybe, but it feels better here where it's coordinating with my queen. I would expect them to play g6. I think g6 is the safest option right now. h6 doesn't solve anything. Bishop takes e5 allows bishop takes h7, so doubtful they do that. So if g6, I can do knight takes or rook takes f3. Or I can consider sacrifices on g6. I don't think those are quite working yet. Rook takes f3 would be the move that just, you know, immediately comes to mind. g5, he's going to play it more aggressive than that. Okay, I'm a little surprised because that opens a lot of lines towards their king. Like bishop takes h7, king h8. Again, I have knight g6 as an option. Oh, there's no way this is working for black. Check. And if king here, I can come in with check. I don't have to do that, but I could come in with check and king here and maybe queen h5 even. Like slow move, threatening bishop g6. King moves to g7 or g8 and queen h7 mate. That should do the trick, shouldn't it? Ah, I also see kind of a nifty looking move. Eh, I don't know if it works, but... Queen g6, king h8, bishop g8, <laughs> threatening queen h7 mate. And if rook takes, I have knight f7 mate or queen h6 mate. That's a real funny move. Yeah, it might be unnecessary though. Well, let's see. Okay, so I check. check. I'm certain that this is the best move. So now, if bishop g8, he'd have to put his queen on e7. And let's say knight f7 check, rook takes f7, bishop takes f7, with dual threats, queen g8 mate, and queen h6 mate. It's too much material. I mean, queen h5 also is just like immediately decisive practically, or queen h6 even. Queen h6 is also possible because of bishop g7, I have knight g6 mate. Yeah, queen, eight, queen h6 probably just ends his resistance immediately. Yeah, that's not that's not possible to deal with all those threats. So I could I could play bishop g8, but queen h6 is looking really juicy right now. Too many threats. I was just spoiled for choice right there. <laughs> yeah, and the main problem for him is that bishop g7, knight g6, no flight squares for the king. Yeah. Checkmate. Okay, so we got a pretty checkmate at the end here. Yeah, and you can see he never got his queen side out, never developed a queen side. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So d4, e6, c4, d5, knight c3. If black wants to get into a triangle, this is kind of a crafty move order because compared to like, let's say after d5 I played knight f3 and then c6, here there's options like queen c2 to defend this pawn. And you've seen me play that move before. But um, 
as played, I'm offering to go into the note boom variation with black taking here. If he had done that, I was thinking about playing g3, actually. But um, that's a pretty sharp line. But instead, he played f5, and I just played bishop f4. We get into this stonewall pawn formation. And it is possible for black to put the knight in on e4. I've just never seen this plan of like a6 and b5. I'm very suspicious of that, because I don't think they quite have the time to do that. Let's start up the engine. They probably need to get on with their development, like castles or knight d7, something along those lines. So a6, I went h3, so playing around with the g4 idea. b5 was played. And then c5. Yeah, I was debating between c5 and also taking and then playing like maybe g4 right now. Um, or knight e5, I see knight e5 was the suggestion of the engine. But I've had good luck cramping people lately. Um, my game, my last game against the Fido 2-2-2-2 guy was a similar pawn structure where I was able to cramp them. And in that game, I played like b4-a4. Yeah, and queen-a5 is superficial. I think they have to play knight d7 probably to keep my knight out of e5 or at least be able to trade if I jump my knight into e5. Otherwise, they might not be able to complete that development of theirs. And I guess I could even play knight e5, oops, knight e5 right away here. I was just mildly concerned about um, b4. The engine says there's nothing to be concerned about. Like now Check. b3, I have queen c3, attacking his queen. Take bishop e2, b3, Check. just queen c3 again. That's Check. probably because virtually any end game is much better for white too. Like black's development problems persist in the end game as well. So I castled, and again, he should play knight d7. He castled, and it's very tough for him after knight e5, I think. Queen's misplaced, development's backward on the queen side, c6 is a weakness. I have a clear plan of f3 and breaking through in the center or on the king side. So bishop f6, I just took. Yeah, I like this decision. I was thinking about f3, knight g5, and then e4, or maybe preparing e4 with a move like rook a1. And I'm fully mobilized. I'm sure this is pretty good too, but there's something satisfying about just getting rid of his only pesky piece, which is that knight on e4. And like I said, I can still angle for f3, because I want to open the position. He's behind in development. I want to rip this baby open. Queen back to d8. Yeah, the engine was opting for a4 in a lot of positions, but f3 was uh, more on my mind. Okay, now I'll be curious what the engine thinks about bishop d3. Yeah, it likes it. It's a dynamic move, so I'm glad the engine approves of it. I just think if I take with the rook, like I thought they might take here and then liquidate a little bit and get knight d7 in at the end, attacking my dark square bishop, maybe black has a chance to catch up on development. It's still probably pretty nice for white with the two bishops, but um. Bishop d3 like somehow just feels more in the spirit of the position, even though it's like still semi-closed. Um, I think I'm I'm justified in playing this move. So if he takes, I was going to Check. take on h7. And I wasn't sure Check. about the ramifications of Check. this line. Like double check, king g8. Because now my rook and my knight are both attacked. Okay, I guess Check. the engine finds a win. What happens if take bishop d6? Check. King f7. Okay, the engine thinks like black is kind of stuck here, I guess. <laughs> Plus 11 is pretty huge. It's not completely obvious to me why white's winning right now, but uh, the engine believes so. <laughs> Let's just play like a random move. Take g2. Probably the other rook's coming over, and I'm threatening to take on g7 at that point. Yeah, so his coordination is just shot at this point. But um, I was curious like about this. I did see that if takes Check. bishop takes h7 king here, I could always just play this move. And like I mentioned, it's nice to have like an escape valve when uh, you're calculating a complicated line. Like if like this can get you halfway. Like if you know that you have a move that looks safe for you and doesn't force you to go all in, that can save you precious minutes in calculation because you know you always have that as a backup. And this is still plus six for me. But he played g5, and I think that's just losing, but. I thought g6 was maybe his best chance. Because I don't think the sacrifices on g6 are quite working yet. Like, let's say I sack my bishop. Then queen takes. Check. Bishop g7. I guess even here, I have good play. Um, good comp, I guess, because my rook's coming. Bishop h6. Bishop g5, maybe. But I'd, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have gone in for that. I probably would have just taken on f3 with the knight, or maybe with the rook, 
I was think leaning more towards rook takes. But this does allow some simplifications. I was even, yeah, I was thinking about this too. It doubles the pawns, but I think with rook af1 and possibly bishop h6 coming, controlling the f8 square, ideally in conjunction with bishop takes g6, this is also pretty good. <laughs> you can see like virtually every line I'm going through, even if it's like, I'm saying it's like not the best line or not the best option, it's still good for white. Like that's just a testament to how bad black's position is right now. That's, that's a nice situation to be in as white. But yeah, Check. g5, take king g7. Check. Yep, and queen h6 looks like the, the best way to get it done. Force mate in a couple. He only has spite checks. And bishop g8, I'm sure, is also winning. Just thinking about that move for a moment. Just because it looked cool. Idea of this Check and then mate. mate here. Oh, I didn't see rook a7 as a possible defense. Yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm very glad that I went for queen h6. And he doesn't have good response to knight g6 or... Uh, I mean, if necessary, the mating pattern, bishop g6, king g8, queen h7, mate. Check mate. So, yeah, black has to be careful in this system. I think um, if they're going to play this line, this like stonewall via the uh, triangle move order, then they probably can't dilly-dally with their development like this, like a6, b5, queen a5. They got to hurry up with that queen side development, especially getting the knight to d7. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. I'll be back tomorrow with another standard game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.